guys, what's up? My name is Elizabeth and welcome back to my channel. So, as the semester is wrapping up and many people who are seniors this year are applying to colleges all around the world, I was thinking about I could do a video about how to survive living on campus. So that's what this video is going to be all about, how to survive living on campus. So I decided to make a really cool slideshow for you all with awesome like little symbols and pictures so you guys all can remember the advice that I give and I hope you guys enjoy. So with that being said, let's get started. Okay you all, so first things first. When it comes to being on campus, you got to know your people. What do I mean by that? You have to know the different people to talk to if you have like a certain issue, certain problems, or just want to sit and chat. For instance, you should know who your RA is. That is stands for room assistance. Um, that, those, that would be the person that you go to if you have any type of issue in your dorm room. But that person will also be the best person if you don't know who else to go to for a security issue, for um, going just because you're missing home and you need to like talk to someone. That's like your go-to person it would be your RA. Some other people that you ought to probably know is security. You know, if there's like this strange guy around your dorm, around your like female dorm room, and you don't even know who that guy is, that's the time to call security. Even if it ends up being nothing, just call security just in case. Your advisor. This would be the person who helps you set up your classes and make sure that you are on track for graduating whenever that trajectory of when you're planning to graduate happens. Your campus pastor. Now, this will maybe more apply to being on a Christian campus, is knowing who your campus pastor is. But even though you might be on a secular campus and you don't actually have a campus pastor, there might be something called a chaplain on campus, or you can join different Christian organizations like crew, the Navigator, the Baptist Ministry, Collegiate Baptist Collegiate Ministry, that's how you call it. Um, I think Young Life is another one. So those different ways to like gather with other Christian believers and have some kind of uh, pastor or at least a Christian mentor on campus or very close to off campus. Know you, the psychologist or counselor, not necessarily a career counselor, even though that's also a great idea to know, but counselor, for instance, as in if you're like missing home or you're struggling with just the pressure of schoolwork or whatever it may be, just talk to your counselor. And one thing I really want to add when it comes to talking to your counselor is that you shouldn't feel shameful about talking to any issue that you have with your counselor. Number one, that person is supposed to keep everything private unless you're in danger or someone else is in danger. Then other than that, that person keeps everything under lock and key and there's nothing shameful asking that you need help. Trust me, I know I've had to ask help a lot. And I also struggle with feeling like it's shameful to ask help. So that's something I'm working on, is just being able to ask help without feeling like I'm a failure, pretty much. So you're not a failure if you go ask for help. Actually, I think this shows a lot of strength for realizing your own weakness and when you need to reach out to someone else. Lastly, know your maintenance. That's if your toilet is plugged. Trust me, that has happened. Um, or the the electricity had got, has gone out and you have a fridge with food that could spoil, happened to me again. If your light bulb goes out, once again, happened to me. <laughs> um, so just know your maintenance and who to call or if there's a sheet outside your dorm room so you can sign that stuff out. So those are like the top people you ought to know. Just lastly, know your professors and know the president, which isn't actually on the slide, but just know those type of people. Just try to get to know as many people as you can so you know who to call when anything happens or if you just want to sit and chat. Okay, so the next slide is called Know Your Contract. What do I mean by that? 
So now that you're a college student, you probably had to sign a lot of paper, or you're about to have to sign a lot of papers about saying that you aren't going to vandalize someone else's car or anything like that, and that you're going to be respectful in the dorm room. You'll also probably be saying that you agree to the syllabus that your professor has given you. This syllabus is very important because it won't just guide you into how much reading you need to do each week, but rather it's also a checkup to make sure that your professor actually stays on track. That means he can't give you an extra quiz that's not even written on there unless he says in the syllabus that he can give random unannounced quizzes throughout the semester. So read your, read your syllabus. It's so important to read your syllabus because it also helps you to plan for big projects, which is the next advice. Plan out your big projects in advance. Start seeing how much reading you need to do. Sometimes it's best to even start reading ahead so you can get those big projects in. Because a lot of times, your projects are going to rely upon the reading that you have previously done. And lastly, know your professor's hours. This will be usually written upon your syllabus about when the professor's doors are open and how do you contact your professor. And lastly, know your housing contract. That is what you're responsible for as a person who's living in the dorm room, are you responsible for dorm chores? How are you supposed to treat your other peers and colleagues in the dormitory? So at BCF, we have something called the student handbook. This is also somewhat of a contract because it tells you everything that you ought to know about living on campus. So highly read your handbook. I know there's a lot of things that said that's in here that are like just common sense, like don't pull the fire alarm trigger because that's just ridiculous and stupid idea um, but there's some things that are just really good in here and it also help you know sometimes the times of different buildings and how to contact other people so read through your student handbook or at least peruse it enough that you're familiar for when you need something you can quickly go to that page and find the information that you need Okay, y'all, so the fifth slide is called Know Your Resources. A lot of these resources will be posted upon their website or actually in the student handbook, which I already talked about in Know Your Contract. So some things that are just great to know what the resources you have is library times, gym times, cafeteria menu, and also does your cafeteria have special dietary needs that are being offered, like being gluten-free, dairy-free, being a vegan or whatever kind of diet you might be on. Is there a writing center that's going to help you with writing? What about tutoring? Do they have that? Do you have to pay for tutoring? What about counseling, which actually isn't on there, which is more on know your people, but you also should look at that. So again, highly recommend reading your student handbook, which will tell you all this kind of information. Okay, so the third slide is called Know Your Money. As Spider-Man says, with great power comes great responsibility. So with money also comes a lot of responsibility. So you ought to learn how to budget your money wisely. You're going to have to be paying for laundry. You're going to have to figure out where your meals come from. You're going to have to figure out how to pay for all the educational bills that you have. And you want to just plain have fun and spend the money with your friends while you go to the college coffee shop or some other coffee shop 30 minutes away which apparently is popular down here where I am or you just want to buy a college t-shirt that says your college name on it so you got to budget those things out so you don't end up running out of money a lot of students end up getting scholarships but a lot of them also have to take out loans so you have to think about the loans and the interest that's going to be involved in that so many students end up with debt I don't know what the average is, but I heard some of it is up to like $30,000 or more in debt. So you really need to start learning how to budget your money right now and see where the trajectory of your money is heading after you graduate out of college. Talking about money may also mean that you need to get a job, whether that's because you need to pay for your education, you want to let money to splur, or you just want to start saving some money and so you ought to get it you might want to actually get a job on campus. However, you need to make sure that when you get a job that you can stay up with all your academic studies. A lot of students who get 
a job and work too many hours, their grades go down, which in essence means you're losing some money in that. Because if you failed your class, you just wasted your money upon a class. So yes, you might have a job here, but then you lost the money over here because you couldn't keep your grades up. So you got to realize that too. And lastly, meal plans. Each student usually that lives on a college campus are required to have some kind of meal plan, especially freshmen have to have a meal plan. So you gotta put that into your calculations and how many times you actually wanna eat off campus or if the campus doesn't have what you want for the day or whatever it might be, you gotta figure out how you're going to eat and where are you going to spend that money, either in the cafeteria or some kind of restaurant somewhere else or if you're not going to eat in the cafeteria but you already have a meal plan you gotta realize that you're paying you're losing money in that area and then you're, you're paying money in another area so just know your money know where it's going i highly suggest using every dollar to help track your money no that's not a promotion it's just something that i use so look up every dollar it's a great app to help you keep track of your money and to budget okay y'all so the sixth slide is called Know Your Responsibilities. Now that you're a college student, you have freedom. You can pretty much do whatever you want to do. However, you still have such things called responsibilities. So how do you keep up with all your responsibilities? As in making sure that you are on time for your class, making sure you get up early enough in the morning so you can make it to your classes or make it to chapel or make it to church wherever that might be know how to get your responsibilities done one thing that i highly suggest is the day starts the night before a lot of people wonder how in the world do i get up early in the morning well i start my day the night before i make sure i tidy up my room before i go to bed and this also just helps to make sure that your room is already ready for room inspection. If you just keep it tidy each and every night, it's a great place to live in because your room is already tidy and you don't have to freak out when inspection does come or if it's caught you off guard and you forgot that inspection was the next morning and you didn't tidy the room the day before. But if you constantly tidy your room, it will be already a habitual habit that you do. And lastly, know your contract your housing contract, which I already talked about a little bit, but within your housing contract, maybe stuff like how your room should be clean, how 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 you should clean the hallways if that's a dorm chore that you have. So just know that your responsibilities. Your last but certainly not least, know yourself. What do I mean by that? What I mean by that is you need to know your limits. What are your limits? Just because you are a college student and you can do whatever you want doesn't mean you should do whatever you want because sometimes you're going to overwhelm yourself. So what are your limits? You got to learn to balance now between your social life, work if you have a job, school life, and if you're a believer, that would also include your church life, your spiritual life. I mean, there's so many aspects of your life that you now have to balance and you don't have anybody around you to tell you, you must do this, this many certain hours, or you must do that, that many certain hours. No, you have to figure that out now. So you gotta know where your limits lies. As I talked about in the last two videos of the last previous two weeks, what are your goals? What is your ultimate career idea? And as one professor told me, you pretty much start with what is your passion? Then how, to, how can you get paid for your passion? And then you work that way back, back to how can you get there? I think a lot of students pay for education and then once they're out of college, that education didn't help them get to their passion and what they enjoy to do and what they believe God is calling them to do for the rest of their life. And lastly, as I talked about when it came to counseling, ask for help when you need it. It's okay. Don't worry to ask for help. It's actually a great thing to learn to ask for help. Okay, y'all, so some final words that I just want to mention is that your student catalog is also your contract. Whatever year you actually begin will be like a contract. In essence, what I'm meaning by is that whatever degree you're looking at, however the student handbook uh, catalog says, 
how to get that degree, that's how you're going to get it. Even though it changes over the year, whatever year you start is going to stay the same for you. This is actually not my year. My year is the year before that, but this is what the Baptist College of Florida handbook looks like for this year. Some other things to know is that when you get to campus, try to find a church um, and Christian group to be with. It's great to go to Young Life. It's great to go to Crew Navigator, the BCM, Baptist Collegiate Ministry, but still try to get yourself involved into a church. If you're also a believer, one thing that they might not tell you, especially if you're on the second campus, is bring a Bible with you all. You know, I know there's nothing in, highlighted there, but bring a Bible with you all. Something really important to just keep up with, um, not because it's a thing to do as a list, but because if we start learning to love God, we'll start doing what pleases Him. And how do you get to know what God likes or what God wants? Well, you learn that by reading His Word. So, those are my final last words. Hey you guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this video about how to survive living on campus. Whatever you end up deciding is great if it's God's will for your life. So with that being said, thank you so much for watching this video. As always, I'd love to hear from you, so comment down below, click that subscribe button and that bell button so you can never miss another video again. I hope you guys enjoy, God bless you, and I'll see you next time. Bye!